my retention is better better than it's ever been doing telesales for a year now and the second thing is i get way more referrals than i've ever gotten being in home but listening to you break this down makes me it gets me excited the goal for everyone on my team is growth you know and if i'm not doing those things if i'm not charging it and leading it from the front mm. you know it's not the people i work with it's on me thank you for joining us on our family first life tri-state serve the people podcast we appreciate you tuning in spending your time to develop and grow with us follow us please on all our social media platforms at family first life tri-state or ffl tri-state we love you keep listening and I hope this information is serving you across the country. All right, everybody. Thank you for jumping on with us for our training day podcast. I got my girl, Brittany Smart, on with me today. Senior Vice President of FFL Abundant, elite producer, Hall of Fame producer. Your resume has been stacked over these years, young lady. How are you today? Doing great, Mark. It's always good to be on with one of my favorite people at FFL. Well, it's a pleasure to have you and um, it's an honor to be on with you as well. So, you know, I've, you know, watched your career um, at FFL since you started. You've always been one of my favorite people, always been a team player, always riding hard for the team. And you've been building your team and growing it while morphing into more of a telesales company, doing stuff via virtual and building a virtual team. So we have a lot to dig into here, if I'm, if I'm thinking, but why don't you tell everybody um, a little bit what's been going on with you over the last quarter or so, some things that you move, shift, change to get to where you are today, and then we'll dive into some of it. Um, so <clears throat> one of the decisions, Mark, that I made, um, coming back to, I guess, I mean, you know that I moved back, back from the East Coast to mm -hmm. back to the West Coast about a year ago. Right. And I really transitioned to doing telesales out of necessity because when I moved back from Jersey back to LA, you know, all my counties were still on the East Coast. <laughs> and so I, you know, I had to make a decision. I said, do I want to get on a plane? And you know how that, yeah. the tra what this travel is from east to west it's, no. it's not that fun right um you know do i want to get on a plane once to twice a week or do i do can i figure this out and i already knew people that were doing um it at a high level obviously you know like jonathan porcina has been, been doing it for years virtually mm -hmm. so i said you know i think i could figure this out mm -hmm. and i kind of had to make that adjustment um as in terms of what i've kind of changed in the last quarter um, I've gotten really, really focused on being very, very intentional with all of the hours in the day. Um, you know, one thing that when I came into this business, one thing that you had reiterated to me and, and Sean, Mike, and, um, you know, people had said that in order to take care of other people, you have to be able to take care of yourself first. Right. So personal production was always number one. That's what I was told when I came into the game. So. You know, I've really just tried to always take the approach, Mark, and, and lead from the front. And obviously in this business, um, since it's such a cash flow intensive business, meaning we can get paid so quickly, you know, I need that cash flow to pour back into my agency because the goal for everyone on my team is growth. You know, and if I'm not doing those things, if I'm not charging it and leading it from the front, mm. then you know, we're going to be stuck, which is what I've experienced, you know, in the past. And it's a hundred percent on me, you hmm. know, it's not the people I work with. It's on me. So you, so let's, all right. I love it. When you decided you were going to go virtual, number one, was it zoom or was it phone? I did try zoom. Um, and I didn't love it, but my first zoom appointment, I was able to help like five families in that, in that one, Zoom appointment. What? So, <laughs> and they were a really, really sweet, sweet couple. And they were so fun um, to have that interaction with, but I, I didn't love it. So I, you know, I thought, let, let me figure out how to do this over the phone. And so, you know, through trial and error, I made a lot of mistakes. I was frustrated. Hmm. I think it took a good, you know, weeks to, to month, like a month or so to really get it right. 
But then I think the most important thing is I had to tailor and readjust my my thinking and my expectations. Nice. When we're home, you know, if we don't help that family and close the deal while we're in home, it's done. It's pretty much a done deal, right? Mm. One thing that I've learned with doing so much mortgage over the phone is that I actually take a different approach for like my approach over the phone is is completely opposite to my in home. Wow. Meaning I set up a second call to close it. Um I I pretty much expect that I'm going to get the objection that hey, you know, I love this. I need to think about it. I need to talk to my wife or or whomever. Hmm. Um and I'm yeah, no problem, you know, Mark. Let's set up a, a our second call so we can um I can put you on the schedule. Basically all we're going to do is either apply or decline the coverage. Wow. So my approach is, is is entirely different. And so wow. I had to tailor my, my expectation. I've got to hear this. I love that. I don't have enough color, but this idea, because you know, it's funny. I bought a decent ticket item on Zoom on a two-step close. <laughs> and it was so easy and so well done. I was like, whatever, dude. Like, I get it. So I want to hear what you're doing on the first call. And then obviously, if they're there on the second call, it's about a wrap. But I want to hear how you transition also into that second call, that second call, that two call close. Yeah. So, all right. So if I'm dialing and I, I still utilize a, a part time dialer to help me, you know, book and, and run appointments. So I can kind of break that down. But if I'm dialing Mark and I'm calling you, the first phone call is really, hey, it's Brittany. It's the underwriter for the mortgage insurance, Mark, giving you a call about the form that you filled out and sent back to me. It's about paying off the loan with Wells, with your lender um, for six seventy eight. dollars um, In the event of death, disability, or illness, there's a plan in place for the mortgage. You remember that form? Mm-hmm. I do. Okay, perfect. Mark, I'm the underwriter for Camden County. Um, My job is obviously just to get this information out to you guys to see if this is a good fit for you and Robin. Um, If it's not, Mark, no worries. We will remove it from the file, update the records. That way no one continues to call you. Um, Mark, I just need about 15 to 20 minutes with you and Robin over the phone to go over this information to determine eligibility. Um, You know, and then I'll offer my times, right? Right. When you guys get from work or what's the best time for you guys. So we set the appointment. Now, before we get off the phone, Mark, to make sure that our call tomorrow goes really seamless. Um, I don't want to keep you guys on the phone for hours. What prescription medications are you guys currently taking? Hmm. Okay. So you'll give me that. Got it. Um, I might, if depending on how the conversation is going, if you're not rushing me off the phone, I might ask a couple good qualifying questions. If you're like, if it's a quick set, you're at work, you're not trying to talk to me that long, then I'm, I'm mirroring that em, um, sure. energy, you off the phone quickly, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll find out the prescription medications, smoking, not smoking, things like that. Sometimes I can find out, you know, if you have children, who you leave in the home to, if something happens, would, mm-hmm. would Robin stay in the home? Would she leave Mark if you pass first? So I'm getting some of that information, setting the appointment, right? right. Um, so then when we do have our appointment tomorrow, like I know if you've had congestive heart failure, I know if you had a stent or pacemaker put in five to seven years ago, you know, right. obviously term is not going to be an option for you. Right. So I'm kind of knowing what I'm going to show them ahead of time. If I'm showing other companies that I have to run illustrations for, I'm doing it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also getting your email mark. I'm getting your contact information. So before we get off the phone, Mark, I want to make sure you have my credentials through the state of New Jersey. Um, I'm going to, is this a cell phone we're talking on right now? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to send you three pieces of information, Mark. I'm going to send you my Department of Insurance um, and Banking license, because in New Jersey, it's insurance and banking, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Um, <laughs> and then my and then my business card. Mm-hmm. which still has your address in Eagle Rock on it, by the way. Praise God. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> and then the carrier worksheet, which shows, Mark, all the companies that I partner with. They're A and A-plus rated companies. I'm sure you have heard of a lot of them if you know insurance, Tr- Mutual of Omaha, Americo, John Hancock, mm-hmm. you know, AIG. Mm-hmm. So I send that over to you in the form of a text. Text, got it. 
and then one thing I say, you know, I'm, I say, Mark, um, do me a favor before our, our, our appointment tomorrow. Um, go to the state website just to validate my information. And people will say, no, 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 you know, that's not necessary. It's not necessary. I'm like, you know, I really want you to feel comfortable giving me some sensitive information because we're going to be exchanging information tomorrow. So that's if you right. have any qualms about doing that, please go to the state website because I'm going to be needing that information from that's you. That's fantastic. Carry on, my sister. Okay, so that that's the first call, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of pushback. Something for for people out there that are running telesales or want to run telesales. I don't know what everyone's magic number is, but I will tell you, I am running more appointments and working harder, like in field, than I was when I was actually physically in the field. Wow! I never ever when I was in home had 40 appointments scheduled on my books ever <laughs> running, <laughs> running sales, you know, sometimes I need 40 to 50 appointments a week to get a 50% show ratio. Wow. You know, people are no showing or they're rescheduling mm. about fifth of the 50% that no show, I would say 20, 25% reschedule. And then the rest of them just don't pick up. Okay. So you have to plan for those things. And while we're on this topic, at that time, if that happens, are these double booked or is this an open slot? So I typically am not double booking. I mean, it, it depends, I guess, on what my lead flow is looking like. Um, I will double book when needed, especially if the appointment's a weak appointment, I, I will have something to do at that time. Mm-hmm. And then when they are no showing me, so if we have an appointment, Mark, it's 9 a.m. and I'm calling you, you're not answering, right? Mm-hmm. I will kick it to my dialer and he'll blow up their phone mm-hmm. in a local area code. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I will also send you a text, Mark, and I will say, hey, Mark, we have an appointment scheduled right now. Um, you know, you missed, it looks like you missed the appointment. Give me a call back when you're ready. That's it. Got it. And if I don't hear from them, I mean, yeah, I will try to get them rescheduled for maybe the next week or two. If I don't hear from them, it's gone. And you would not believe how many text messages I get, Mark. Hey, Brittany, we talked a month ago. I'm ready to proceed with the insurance. Got hey, it. Brittany, I'm so sorry. I missed you. Something came up. It's been crazy at work. Um, when do you have some time to sit down? Like I actually have people seeking me out to, to get on the phone and talk about insurance. So the let me know when you're ready is very strategic to no pressure. I'm here anyway. I'm here. I can get you on my calendar if you reach back out to me. That's a strategic line, correct? Yeah, yes, it is. It is. It's, it's wow. To, designed to release the pressure. Yep. And then I never want them to think that I'm chasing or hunting them because you know what we know about when we try to chase something when we are chasing something it continues to move away from us (laughs) right (laughs) I'm not anybody tell you that (laughs) it continues to move dude the psychology I'm getting right now is amazing this is very very helpful Um, keep going Okay, so initial phone call, it's great if for those people that I'm, I'm sure like if you're a new agent, there's no need to get a dialer, you know, um, there's no need for that. So you're going to be calling yourself, building the rapport with people when you talk to them tomorrow, they already know you, it's comfortable, it's warm. And you know, I think one of my the skill sets that I've acquired, Mark, just through sales and everything is when I get on the phone with someone, if they're 74 84, 34, doesn't matter to me. I talk to them the same way. You know, Mm. if the guy's name on the form is James, I'm like, hey, Jim, you ready for our call? Right. Mm. It's like, it's just super relaxed. Mm -hmm. So when we get on the phone, it's like they already know me. And I've I've never even, most of the time, I haven't even talked to these people. Mm. And it's just such a warm conversation. Now, if it, the energy of, what is this about? I really don't need this. I don't want to do this. You know, are you just trying to sell me something? Oddly, like I don't get a lot of that anymore. Hmm. But when I do, you know, the key thing that I say, Mark is, Hey, my job is just to figure out if this is a good fit for you and Robin. If it's not, no worries. What is 10 to 15 minutes of you and I talking on the phone, trying to figure out if you're in the right position or not. Hmm. Right. It costs you nothing. 
Right. And my and I have to still perform my job and my duty of getting you protected and getting this information out to you because you requested it. Right. All right. So the second call is where I'm kind of hammering some things out. So because this I really have the first about, appointment, right? Yeah. Got it. So so first call is like just booking the appointment, mm -hmm. finding out the prescription medications, kind of trying to get some information. Are they working, not working? Does one of them only work? Um, so we're kind of figuring that part out. Um, the second call is, all right, so we're getting on the phone to hammer out the details. Mm -hmm. This is when I'm learning, Mark, about your family dynamic, okay? okay. I'm learning about, are you and Robin both working? What percentage of the household income comes from you? What comes from her? If you guys are at the age when you're receiving Social Security, I'm breaking down Social Security, Social Security survivorship, who's going to be at a greater financial loss in the event that one of you dies first. Mm. So that's my number one thing I'm figuring out because I'm explaining that, yes, mortgage protection, you know, in theory is to pay, um, you know, hopefully pay off your home or pay off the asset or as close to it as we can with insurance if you pass away. Mm. However, it, um, mortgage protection is also used as income replacement, which I'm explaining to every household I speak with. And now right? this is this is a husband and wife in this situation. They're both there, correct? <clears throat> um, Doesn't matter, I, whatever, yeah. So when you're booking it, you're asking for them both to be there or you're literally trying to find out who the decision maker is and saying, hey, I can meet whoever that is. Yep, it's more the decision maker. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's working, so let's keep going. Like, I'm like all the time. So um, how do you find out on that first call who's the decision maker? What, what's yep. the question? So <clears throat> when I'm starting to ask the income pieces and who makes the most money and you know, Mark, so if we're going to take an application tomorrow, do you need Robin to do it? Can you guys, do you guys typically make, you know, um, financial decisions independently? Mm. Or is this something that you guys will need to think about? <clears throat> well, we're definitely going to think about it. Okay, can she be on the call with us tomorrow? No, because she's working. All right, so I'm assuming that we go over the numbers. Let's say you like what you hear, you find it valuable to yourself. You're going to have a conversation with Robin and then you guys are going to be able to let me know, let's say 48 hours, three days or something like that. Yeah, we can do that. That's typically how most of my calls go. Got it. So that is the opening to the third call. Yes. Or in this to, case, to the, two call, the two call close. Yeah. All right. Keep going. Okay. So, um, you know, the income piece and, and I'm glad you, you brought up Zoom, Mark. You said you purchased something in a two step process over Zoom and, and it was not cheap right? right wasn't i don't know what it was but okay <laughs> typically you know my average sale um size is about 170 per month okay. over the phone mm -hmm. okay still mm -hmm. about the same as it was in home maybe it's a little bit more but you have to provide tremendous value on these phone calls or they're not going to do it with you they're going to they're going to do it with the person that shows up at their house, which, by the way, I have a really good rebuttal for not letting people come to your house. <laughs> I can't wait. This is um, I'm School is in session right now. You're doing telesales? <laughs> <laughs> well, just so I don't forget, Mark, um, you know, I give you a call and you say, yeah, I have all these people calling me. Um, this one guy is supposed to come to my house next week. I would say, whoa, Mark, that's that's really alarming. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> and, you know. 2022, after the, the pandemic, the Delta variant, all of those things, you know, you're still letting in, in people come to your home. <laughs> I would say that's so uncommon these days, Mark, that you know, I just take care of over the phone in 10 to 15 minutes. Um, there's no need to let someone over at your house, right? Um, and it's actually, really it's actually alarming. very uncommon. Who's alarm? Hey, by the way, whose alarm is going off? <laughs> Yours or theirs? <laughs> Got it. Oh, I love it. I'm like, don't let people come over. Why, why would you do that? You pulled out a form to call. Let's take care of it now. Love it. Go ahead. Um, okay. So 
you know, you have to provide a lot of value. Um, I don't talk about, I do talk about the death benefit, of course, right? Mm-hmm. Um, depending on where we're at, depending on health, you know, yeah, let's talk about paying off the whole mortgage, things like that. But mm-hmm. if they're very healthy, the, the top three things I'm leading with, and if four things, if it's, if we're going through NLG, I'm leading with chronic illness, critical illness, terminal illness, critical injury. Wow. I'm leading with living benefit riders. I'm I'm leading with let's put income back in the home. If God forbid one of you become disabled, Love it. how much is monthly mortgage payment? It's thirty eight hundred dollars. Okay, through running this program, for example, we could put back in sixty two hundred dollars back in the home if something happens to you and you do become totally disabled or you do have to go into a fa- uh, assisted living facility, right? So mm-hmm. I'm trying to build as much value right. mark as I can and. One of the ways that you're that to ensure that you're going to build the value is by knowing the income ratios, who's going to be at the greatest financial loss in the event one of you dies first. That's what we need to figure out. So that's where I pull apart the income. How much of your pension mark when you pass away is going to be paid out to Robin? Is it 100 percent, 50 percent, 25 percent, zero percent? Some people literally don't know these things. And some people do not know that with social security survivorship, they don't get to keep both incomes. Some people think that if they their spouse passes, they get to keep both. Mm-hmm. You know, I've literally been in situations over the phone where if one of the spouse dies, they have maybe $2,500 to live on and their mortgage is 2,800. So we both agree on that call. If, you're, if your spouse dies first, you're screwed, right? And, and those are the words that, that I need them to, I need to hear back. Mm-hmm. You're screwed, right? You agree? Yeah, I agree. They, they, once you run through those numbers with them, they know. And sometimes it's very shocking. Mm. And then, you know, we're here to say, hey, don't worry. I'm going to try to put you in the best financial position as possible. Sure. But also, Mark, these programs are the pricing of the programs. I know in sales, maybe people are like, they're not supposed to say price. My first thing on our call is, hey, Mark, you know how these programs work? The pricing of these programs are based on three things, your age today, your health, and the amount of insurance or the type of insurance we're applying for. That's what the three pieces are we're looking at today. I love it. I love it. We're doing business. Price. (laughs) So (laughs) we're not running from the facts. Go ahead. When they understand, like, why I'm asking these questions, Mark, you know, over Zoom, I, I get to hear, you know, different things from agents and I, I get to hear, I'll help agents run their appointments and I'll hear them ask certain questions like, well, what's your monthly income? What's this? What's that? And you can hear the hesitation and the client's voice because for some reason, you know, the agent has not made them feel comfortable enough yet to give them that information. Right. But the second piece is they don't, and they don't understand why we're asking for that. Why do you need that? Like for some reason they think that we're just trying to be very, you know, in their business, but we need that information to put together the best possible program for you. I need to understand your situation. You know, I'm not going to give you a blanket insurance policy. So I think that's a common you know, error that new agents get into, they need to just explain a little bit what, how the programs work. Here's the questions that I'm going to ask you, and here's why. Hmm. Makes sense. That's so strong. Oh, my gosh. This is so thorough. It's, it's, this is making me want to sell life insurance. <laughs> like, this is really good. Um, got it. So this is all of, all of this is and now have you gone into the financial inventory yet yep so on the second call where that's where we're digging in we're going through the financial inventory asking about current insurance policies Mm -hmm. um you know i always ask mark what type i always assume they're going to have something so Mm -hmm. i say what kind of insurance do you have outside of your job nothing your job controls something that you control what do you have Mm -hmm. you know so we're pulling apart that well I have the work insurance. Then we explain why work insurance doesn't count, why I don't count it. It's not a part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Can't count on it to be there when you retire, get fired, Mm -hmm. you know, leave your job. Got it. So we're, you know, we're going into all of that. You know, I'm asking about. Hold on. It's crazy. I'm having an aha. Like, it's crazy how much more detailed you have to be because you're not there. I was just thinking about the fact that we try to get policies out a lot. And I'm thinking in home Mm -hmm. or over the phone. 
you know, I'm listening to how descriptive you are with every single thing you say from the lead in to the to the end cap of what you're saying. And I'm like, this is like really um, detailed, which is how I would be if I was which is how I was. I sold mortgages over the phone for 10 years. And if you're not if you're not very thorough, they can't move forward. So but I'm hearing you and I'm and you're everything's so down because you do it so much. But I'm like, yo, this is very, very, very thorough. So when you're dealing with them and, and you're you're working through the policy, is there a formula? Do you have a formula, a formulated series of questions that you're asking to know what the policy is or are you physically making them go get it? So it depends on if it's relevant for the situation, right? Because let's say that I'm asking them to pay three eighty three a month, but they're already paying $170 for a policy they have no idea what it's about. Hmm. So they're like, mm, 383, I'm not gonna pay that because I'm already paying 170. Okay, well, we need to find out, Mark, what you're paying for, right? Mm -hmm. And most people, as we know, they don't know off, they, they don't know, right. they don't know mm -hmm. where they, right? So <clears throat> I'm asking them, one of the things that leads into what kind of coverage you currently have and I preface it, Mark, I, I'm asking them, I tell them why I'm asking for what do they, I'm asking um, what they currently have. You know, there's a reason it's not I tell them it's not to I'm not trying to replace what you have. If you have something that's good, we don't need to do something twice that's already been done well the first time. Very what good. I'm trying to God, figure out so is. What I'm trying to figure out is, is that policy going to be there when they, when they need it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, in the inventory, when I'm asking questions, I'm asking, do Mark, do you and Robin already have your final expenses taken care of? Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. Was that that 170 that you're paying a month for final expense for, for a whole life policy? Yeah, it is. Okay. So two things are going off in my head at that point. If they're healthy enough to qualify for an IUL or term, I'm going that route. But I'm like, listen, you already have your permanent insurance taken care of. No worries. We don't really need to, you know, I, I don't really pull that all of that stuff up if I'm leading into another direction. But if, if we're doing term to term or IUL to IUL, I'm like, listen, I know that we offer some of the best programs on the market. And I know this because I talk about them every day and I know what value they have to clients um so you know i'm telling the clients this i'm like listen we you know let's compare apples to apples to make sure that that 170 a month that you're spending is really where you need to be spending your money that you're getting the most from that um and then i'm also breaking down like the mathematics of things mark so um i don't know if you want me to get into that but you know, I have this whole structure of mm. if they're not a good fit for term, but they think that they're, they're 75 and they, they think they're going to get a $450,000 term policy for like 80 bucks a month, mm. you know, I have to break that down. Mm. You know, the age, why you won't qualify, <laughs> you know, you had a stent put in five years ago. Um, you know, I'm telling them, unfortunately, you're not able to qualify, but here's the reason, Mark, that you don't even want that term policy. So I'll grab my calculator. And I'll start talking to them about how much money they're going to be putting into a term policy over 20 to 30 years if they don't pass away. Typically, the average person, and this is what I'm explaining, the average person puts twenty-four dollars to $36,000 into a term policy over 20 to 30 years. So the insurance company is betting. So insurance is a measure of risk, right? That's why we take out insurance. We're insuring the risk of something that, that could happen. So the insurance company is betting that Mark Mead is not going to pass away in 30 years. We did the underwriting. We know he's not going to pass away. 98% of term policies typically don't pay out. I'm giving the clients the numbers. Um, however, you are putting in $36,000 over 30 years. It's kind of weird. Like, are you betting on yourself to die to get that money back, right? Hmm. Or is, is it just be a wash, right? So when you explain <laughs> all of these things to people, they're like, oh, I didn't want term insurance anyway. That sounds awful. Mm. Well, it's great because you weren't going to qualify for it anyway. Now right. we go into equity protection. We go into whole life permanent protection. So that was a long winded answer sure. for when do I ask them to their policies and not. But it, it just depends. Totally. Totally. God, it's just bringing to light how much detail.
has to go into everything to move them forward. And I think that's the most I'm getting the value that I'm getting out of this, the mainly. Because I listen, I've I've you know, we've we have live dials, we have telesell, we have a decent amount of agents that sell strictly over the phone now. But listening to you break this down makes me it, it gets me excited because the amount of detail like and you had to self teach. Like you've learned to be over descriptive and, and and to have some of these nuances because the clients stay the same there it's it's these word tracks work on a good portion of these uh, on every one of these scenarios it's just when do these scenarios come up so if they're coming up on 65 percent of the calls you have to figure out how to adjust and make it so that they understand enough to move forward so that's massive so w- let's land it with the first with the first call and then I want to hear how you open up the second call and how you finally get down to doing business. Okay. So the introduction, so we've, I've already made the first call, right? Mark, mm-hmm. we booked the appointment. So now we're on the phone, we're getting into it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably the most important part and it's 30 seconds long, but it's the most important. Okay, so we get on the phone, Mark, Hey, Mark, more, good morning. How's your day going? Great. Okay. So Mark, and I go right into it. Mm-hmm. So again, my job as the underwriter is just to go over and walk you through the, these insurance programs, Mark, to see how they work. My job is to figure out, is this type of coverage a good fit for you and Robin? Mm-hmm. Like I was saying you know, before, if it's not, no worries. This is not mandatory. We'll update the file for our records. Um, you know, we'll, that way we make sure that you're not getting a lot of phone calls if you decide not to move forward with this today. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So how these programs work, Mark, the pricing of the programs are based on three things. It's your age today, your health, we're looking typically at the last 10, 10 years or so. Um, and then um, the amount of coverage that we're applying for, or the type of insurance that we're looking to cover. Okay. Mm-hmm. So With that being said, Mark, the questions that I'm going to ask you are based on, again, me trying to find the best program for you guys. Mm. Now, a hundred of my clients, Mark, I've been doing um, specifically, um, I've been in the insurance industry for about eight years, specifically mortgage insurance. I've been asked about every single question you can imagine. Now, Mark, one of the most common questions I get on a day-to-day basis is, Brittany, I have life insurance. I have work insurance. Why do I need to do this? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I go into Mark about how those work insurance policies are life insurance. 80% of them or so 90% of them are death death benefit only. That's great. If you pass away, you've been paying on it. You know, hopefully it's going to pay out. However, for relatively and generally healthy people, Mark, um, you know, a lot of the most common things that plague Americans today, heart attack, stroke, cancer, renal failure, dementia, um, disability, those life insurance programs that the majority of my clients have will not pay and they will not cover your expenses or replace income in the event that one of those so things strong. happens to you and do not die. Wow. Okay. So that's what I can provide for you. Wow. And that my opener every single single time does you know if now if I know that they're 80 I'm not talking about living benefits because you know whole life doesn't have living benefits except terminal illness so I'm Mm -hmm. not doing that sure but I also throw there for generally healthy people Mm. I may not know like the whole health picture so I kind of tread lightly Mm -hmm. but if on our first call I found out you're not taking any meds no DUIs no license suspensions no felonies no misdemeanors which, by the way, I through trial and error, I realized on the on the profiling calls, I have to hit that stuff hard. I'm yeah. like felonies, you know. Sometimes yeah. we gloss over that and yeah. just think about health. Yeah. But you get to the application, they're like, "Oh, I had a DUI like yeah. last year." You're like, you know. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I, I'm treading lightly there, but I'm 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 laying out the foundation. Okay, so I'm like. So, Mark, that is the reason why mortgage protection and the options that I have for you make sense for what you're looking for. Mm. Okay, so what what we're going to do today, 
Um, I'm going to get, I'm going to ask those questions based on that information. And then Mark, a hundred percent of my clients agree that if this does not make sense financially and it's not in the budget, it doesn't make sense to proceed with me today. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it's just a little, little thing, but it puts us together in unity. Great. We agree on it. We're holding hands and we're marching over the the crossing line of <laughs> making an application because I understand your needs and I, and I understand what everybody wants. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And then we just go, I go straight into the profiling. I don't waste time. I never talk to them about what they're doing today or what they did, you know, two days ago. <laughs> we're talking about making an application. So once we're taking an application, you know, one of my favorite questions is asking, where were you born? And that opens up a whole thing, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And so we'll just conversate and, and build the rapport that way. And ironically, my retention is better, better than it's ever been doing telesales for a year now. And the second thing is I get way more referrals yeah. than I've ever gotten being yeah. in home. And <laughs> shamefully, I don't ask for them. I get clients that text me all the time. Brittany can, you know, talk to my brother talk to my cousin, you know, talk I, to my mom. She needs insurance. And I love those text messages. Oh God, and they're that's dumb. how you know you did your job. That's how you know. I'm not saying I'm amazing by any means, guys. You are amazing. But I've just gone through trial and error, trial and error. And I did. I made a ton of mistakes, never got phone calls back again, either said too much or didn't say enough the, over the phone, did not have control, and I did not set the expectations up front. Once you do that, it's, you know, they're eating out of your hand. That's so thorough. I, I, I can't, like, that is a clinic <laughs> on telesales um, and ha- helping people over the phone. And, again, you have access to, fi- to 50, 49 states. So your reach is endless, you know. What are you a- how many families a month are you averaging doing telesales? Um, I would say on a given month, it can be anywhere from 25 to 40. Um, I need to, I think we talked about, I'm a little bit behind for hall of fame, but I still believe that I can, I can sew that up and it will be a hundred percent telesales. A hundred percent. You know, you're a complete boss at this and that's great. And I really appreciate you taking time to get in here and cover this so thoroughly soup to nuts. We didn't get a lot of time to go into some of the things you're doing from a team building standpoint, but we'll get you back on to talk about some of that stuff because I don't want to leave this meat on the table. So thank you so much, Britt, for being able to pour in like you did. This is fantastic training. Uh, I need to get you on more training. Like, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. You're one of the first people when I joined this company to pour into me and really like give me that belief factor in myself, you know, and um, I always, always, always appreciate you. I appreciate you too. You're, you're the, um, you're, you're a friend of the podcast and our listeners appreciate you. So thanks for sharing. Everybody keep listening. Brit, keep crushing it. Let's keep breaking records. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.